So the Mavic 3 just keeps on getting better and better each day, each month, after every single update that DJI keeps continuing to add to this beautiful drone. Now, today in this video, I'm going to discuss the new features on the latest firmware that was added at the time of this video, uh, which is December 5th, 2022. Check it out. What's going on guys? My name is Eddie. I am a YouTuber. Am I a YouTuber? I am a content creator, I guess, here in New York. And um, today I'm gonna be talking about the latest firmware update and showing you how I tested it out today on the Mavic 3. Now, again, this firmware update was added to all the Mavics, so it doesn't really matter if you have uh, you know, the Mavic 3 Classic, which is the partially completed drone. It doesn't matter if you have the Mavic 3, like Pro, I would consider this a Pro, but the Mavic 3 or the Mavic 3 Cine, um, DJI has been adding these firmware updates and new features to all of their Mavic 3 lineup. So let's go ahead and take a deep dive on the new features that were added to this Mavic. So it is quite interesting that DJI, and actually very nice of DJI, to keep adding additional firmware updates to these drones because just in November, November 2nd actually of this year, we received a big firmware update that added some incredible features to the Mavic, um, such as night mode. You know, now the Mavic 3 has this unique feature that, uh, that completely eliminates all the noise in your video. Um, you know when you're shooting at night and I made a video about that if you want to check that out you know the comparison between night mode and, and shooting in a just normal standard picture profile and reducing the noise in post you can check that out up here on the right um, but this uh, new feature or this new firmware that was released November 2nd and by the way that is dot zero nine zero zero also added the ability to do cruise control on on the drone which is something that i tried today here and it works pretty cool what cruise control does is just allows you to continue on the path that you had as you were holding down your sticks so for example if you were going forward if you were going backwards while increasing altitude you don't have to necessarily continue to hold the sticks you can just assign a button for cruise control and the drone will continue to do that that's a pretty cool feature when you're doing some orbits and you just want to get some really smooth shots and you don't want to mess that up. Um, also, another very important feature was added ISO of 1600 for D-Log. And I'm reading my notes here because this is a lot to remember. Um, just a lot of different things added. And it also included support for remote ID in the United States, which is something that's coming. Now, let's talk about the latest firmware update that was just released in December. That's a big one here. In December, we also received, one month later, another huge firmware update, and um, the Mavic 3 just became a complete drone. So the first feature that I think was outstanding, outstanding was the fact that the Mavic 3 now has an altitude limit of 1,000 meters. That's right, 1,000 meters up from 500 meters prior. That now means that your Mavic 3, regardless of which one you have, can go up to 3,280 feet up in the air. 
Now, I know that there's two sides of the story. We have some drone pilots and, you know, enthusiasts of this hobby that might completely disagree with that feature being added. But DJI actually did add some precautionary measures. You have to be about 50 kilometers away from an airport in order to even go up that high. And with all the geofencing that the drones have built in, it, you wouldn't really be allowed to go up to 3,000 feet, even if you really wanted to, in a, in a city like such as New York. Um, now, where this does come out handy in is like, for example, right now, I am in uncontrolled airspace in Long Island. And let's say Long Island is a very flat, flat island. Um, but let's say if there were some mountains, or let's say I was out in Arizona or in California, and uh, we have some mountains out there that I want to go ahead and 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 reach over that three thousand that you know fifteen hundred limit that we had prior. That's where these um, features will come in handy, um, letting you you know fly up to three thousand feet. Definitely has its use case scenario. Um, I wanted to give that a try here today, but I don't think that's really the smartest thing to do because you know what am I doing shooting up to the sky for no reason. Also, you know, I am, I have to do, I have to abide by the 400 feet uh, regulation that the FAA has set in place. Now, going back to my earlier comments around the firmware in November, I mentioned night mode. Night mode was pretty cool because it reduced all that noise, but you were stuck at 4K 30. Well, I'm pleased to announce that with this new firmware update, um, you now get 4K 24 and 4k 25 so you can shoot now in a 24 frames per second um, frame rate which makes more sense when you are shooting at night now the largest feature of them all i think from this firmware update has been waypoints waypoints was just added to all three of the mavic 3 series and it is fantastic i think this is something that you know many in the community has been asking for many that leverage these drones for a, a source of a revenue stream whether they're you know monitoring construction jobs or they're doing some sort of landscape uh, photography or cinematography waypoints is something that comes in very very handy and dji just added it to the mavic 3 series in december's firmware update now today here while i came for a sunrise wasn't the best sunrise by the way um, I did leverage waypoints and waypoints is pretty cool because it also allowed you to download offline maps. So now you can go ahead and set your waypoints at home when you know the destination you're going to be going to and you can set your point of interest. You can set your altitude. You can set your speed. I'll demonstrate here the screen recording that I captured from my smart controller. It allows you to customize many different aspects of the waypoints your global speed so how fast you want the drone to travel in between those waypoints um, is there a, a specific scene that you want to capture the, uh, with a point of interest in mind do you want to do video do you want to do you want to snap a photo what do you want it to do after the waypoint is completed do you want it to return home to you do you want it to land do you want it to just hover there and in the event that your waypoint is in between obstacles or just a lengthy waypoint away from you and if you happen to disconnect what do you want the drone to do do you want it to continue on the waypoint and then you know rth land or hover or do you want it to automatically come back to you so there's just so much control and you have so much uh different options for you to customize your waypoints now the last final thing i'll say about waypoints is that it definitely takes some practice it's not like a hyperlapse i would say i tried doing a waypoint as i um demonstrated on my screen recording here today and i'll share the video of the the output of that waypoint and it's something that you really need to take your time to set and i know like with practice you'll be able to really get some really nice waypoints but you just i feel like you just can't do a waypoint to do a waypoint it needs to have you know uh a use for it so like for example if i was monitoring a construction job and i want to save the waypoint which is something else you can do you can save your waypoint i can just come back to this location and continue to just run the same waypoint over and over again to monitor progress that's a really use case scenario for uh waypoints or if you want to just you know be able to get like the smoothest shot and let the drone do all the work that's also another good reason on why to use waypoints but um I'm going to see how I can continue leveraging waypoints and uh, continue on 
working on all these features that DJI keeps adding to the drones. So I hope that you found this video helpful um, in understanding all the new enhancements that DJI has added to the Mavic 3. Um, the next video I'm going to have for you guys is the new enhancements on the Avada. So DJI just keeps cranking firmware updates for these drones, but also at a cost because they're also, you know, doing some little sneaky maneuvers and adding remote ID. So with the Avada, you know, we, we did receive a nice firmware update where it gives you 10 bit color kind of helps or reduces that tumble defect that the drone had. Um, but we also now have to use our phones in order to even launch the drone to, to transmit remote ID. But anyway, that's for another video. Just wanted to drop that as a, as a little nugget and plant the seed that that video is coming up and, uh, hope you guys enjoyed until next time. Let me know what questions you may have first and, and any comments that you have consider liking, subscribing, all that good stuff. And until next time, I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.